Okay, we are live episode 81. I'm bringing the decibel down because I'm in another office. Melanie Khan, Poppy Lou. You got it. Adam Pollock, Paul Pollock. You got it. Pollock, uh, Rodeo CPG, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Thank you. I'm excited. I feel good today. It's, and I always just have to tell, I'm, I hope you feel good today. Everybody, uh, let's get into it. Let's talk. Let's talk. Juice. Uh, how did it start? Uh, when did it start? Why did it start? All the good things. All right, we started this couple couple years ago. Uh, we started with a line of balls and lemonades, but we actually recently pivoted uh, during COVID. We wanted to. We had. We were really excited to launch kids pouches, and so last year, right at the beginning of COVID, we launched at Walmart with these little suckers, and so it's almost like a rebirth of the company because we're starting fresh with these guys um, and they're they're taking off. So super excited about um, about the future trajectory with these kids' pouches. Seeing the pouch, right? We get reminded of something, maybe a little nostalgic, right? I think I even have some, I have two young kids. Um, so I definitely understand. How did you choose that? Why did you choose that? Uh, and sort of give us this, the story behind that. All right. So I, I love lemonade, huge lemonade fan. And there is nothing in the kids aseptic juice market that's lemonade and everything's really kind of crappy. I don't know what your kids are drinking, Mark. I hope it's not, well, I'm not even going to say the brand name. Um, but listen, we grew up with brands like Capri Sun and Kool-Aid back in the 1980s. And yes, the category, you know, these brands are big. They've got lots of different SKUs, but they really haven't adapted to the times. And parents don't want kids to be drinking so much sugar. They don't want the kids to be drinking fruit punch. So how do we give kids something that's really, really flavorful, that's not water or milk? Uh, and so lemonade is a great opportunity there, a low sugar, a lower in sugar, a healthier option. And that's what we did with Poppy Lou. You've got organic juice in the fridge. Uh, and, uh, you know, I kind of time that too, as far as because the sugar and the like, uh, I'm a proponent of sugar for specific reasons and where it's coming from. Uh, I do go the organic route, so I'll pay the premium for that. Um, give us uh, the take on where you have distribution now. What's the model behind it? Where do you see yourself over the next uh, 90 days? Next 90 days, we are rolling out at Target. A thousand stores coming up. We just shipped on Friday. So in a few weeks, it'll be out there in the market. Um, but we've got another num number of other retailers coming online as well. Several divisions of Albertsons, Stop and Shop, Lowe's, um, Safeway Mid-Atlantic. So we've got a bunch coming up that we're really really excited about. And to your point, yes, it is organic, just as you had mentioned, that's, that's critical. That's what parents care about. So we wanted to make sure uh, we're hitting all those key nutrition points. Give us your deck. Uh, I sometimes go into this more on the sales side, but because you got a target launch, what do you think were the key attributes as far as you being able to do that? Uh, was How were we able to get into target? Listen, there, there are a couple of reasons. As I mentioned, you know, that the category is pretty archaic and stale and hasn't changed that much since the 1980s. We have this great looking brand. It's a really bright pink package. It really stands out on shelf. We have lemonade. And again, lemonade is not something that you'll find in the kids aseptic juice set. Um, and um, we've got all the health attributes and then we're women owned. So it's something we, we put on pack recently. So I put the little women owned logo on the, on the package and it's the way that we as a brand Poppy Lou can connect authentically to mom shoppers in a way that no other brand can do because no other kids juice brand is a woman owned business. Um, so little point of difference there. I love that. Uh, I'm a big believer in it. I, especially with women owned businesses today, talk about it. It's okay. Don't be shy. My, listen, that certification was so hard to get. Now that I've gotten it, you better believe I'm going to use it as much as I possibly can. I'm for it. Uh, so, so I like that. Now let's talk about uh, the, the way you are approaching this as far as finding a co-packer. I'd be interested and maybe somebody else would be as well, trying to get into the juice space, beverage space. How did you go about that? So there are, as you can imagine, a lot of co-packers that do beverage. There are not, are not a lot of co-packers that do pouches. And that's, that's the catch, right? So if there aren't a lot of co-packers, 
there's not a lot of competition. And so the pricing was really high. So that was one, one watch out for any entrepreneur going into the pouch space is that, that the, uh, the supply there for manufacturing is not particularly easy, but I've got a great co-packer. They have have done fantastic work um, for me. They're quite large. And so I'm glad that I kind of got into there, got into that, got some line time with them, even though I'm a small player. What were you doing before this? Uh, Maybe that provides some context as far as you getting into this or the experience that you have, or maybe also then talk about maybe who your first team member was and why. All right. So my background, you may be familiar with a brand called Fair Life, a dairy brand. So that was my baby. So I created that business um, under under the auspices of a larger company for which I worked at the time. That was my little pet project, named it, did all that crazy packaging with that unique label and the unique bottle shape, uh, pricing, and took it to market and test market, and then launched it nationally with Coca-Cola. And as you know, Fair Life eventually uh, exited to Coke. So it was a ridiculously amazing experience. It was like startup on steroids and very well funded. And that was something I didn't truly appreciate at the time when I had great, massive Coke sized budgets to work with. Um, but, you know, the only logical next step after you've had an experience like Fair Life is to be an entrepreneur yourself. So I had to try my hand at it. Prior to Fair Life, I was in big CPG. And so it's like, all right, well, now that Fair Life, now, I've, now that I've sort of checked the box on Fair Life, do I want to go be an entrepreneur and challenge myself? Or do I want to go be a brand manager on Stovetop? So it was was kind of a no brainer here. I love that story. Uh, And yes, everybody will know that brand. Um, And they will also understand the sentiment about the cash. It's funny, prior to this, literally minutes before this, I was on another uh, interview of some sort. And I say, yeah, I talk about this openly about money you need. You need money for this. And you need a lot more than you think. Again, there's two ways to do it. I want to always be fair. You can start out small and do hand-to-hand stuff in the farmer's market. I'm all for that. But if you want to scale, uh, you're going to need some cash. No uh, doubt. You are you are spot on. And that is it is so tough, especially for a business like this. As I mentioned, it's all about scale. Like my mate, these these co-packers doing kids' pouches don't do anything on a small level. So it's like you go in with two feet. And you're just like, all right, I'm in this, but now I definitely need the cash because here we go, Target and Albertsons and the rest of it. So It's amazing. Um, Let's talk about who is on the team. What do you think are the additional key pieces that you brought on or that somebody would in, in, in a time like this as far as where the brand is? So Poppy Lou is a tiny, tiny team. Part of that is because of COVID. I actually had to say goodbye to a couple of folks just to to tighten tighten the belt and sort of, you know, hang in there for what the for the ride that was 2020. Um, So right now it's me. I've got someone in social media. I've got someone uh, on finance and accounting and legal, which is huge. And that's it. So I am salesperson. I am marketer. I am supply chain. I am finance. You name it, I've done it. And I got to tell you, I have learned more. So I'm, I'm 43 years old, which you can probably tell by the wrinkles here. Um, I've learned more in the last few years of entrepreneurship than in my entire career to date. Just by living it and breathing it and doing it all. I'm a fan of that. Uh, she said 33, folks. 33. Um, <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah. Um, I am a fan I'm of like that. I'm like the old lady in the room. It's really embarrassing. And like Expo West especially at Expo West, you walk around and it's like, oh my God, like I really am the old lady. I did a, I did a, hey, I'm a 40 something year old post uh, yesterday on LinkedIn. Anyway, um, so I like that. You know, I like that. Again, you can be the one man or one woman band uh, for quite some time. And then you'll know when you need to bring in somebody, but you should be very careful, cautious, um, be patient. It's all good. You got this. Um, let's talk about 12 months from now. Where would you like to see yourself? Where's the brand? And is there a direct to consumer play with it? Mm. So 12 months from now, you know, right now, because as I mentioned, we're getting all that distribution. So 12 months from now, I want to see the fruits of that labor. Not necessarily more distribution. I want to see strong velocity so I can say, hey, this is what the last, the previous 12 months have done for me. I got into all these stores and my velocity is through the roof. That's what I want to see. Um, e-commerce, it's really tough when you're a beverage, you're heavy, 
you're, you're, you have a lot of water in your product. And the category is a relatively low price category. Like if kids pouches sold for like 15 or 20 bucks a carton, I'd be fine. But this is a low price category and a very heavy category. So e-com, we do a little bit. It's not a focus. Um, I think until, until there's a better freight solution out there for heavy products that are low cost, I just, I don't, I don't see it happening in any, in any major way of e com ever being a huge part of our business, the way that freight currently works today. For context, everyone who's watching, you'll get it. Uh, you're talking about pet pack size could be this weighs a few pounds, but uh, as far as the cost. So if the cost is, I don't even know, but I have an idea. So like four bucks, four bucks at retail, right? So, so if it's four bucks, uh, you're spending more than that just to get it out there. So the only way is to build the case pack, right? So meaning you want to add more stuff into the shopping cart. You got to get the shopping cart value up 20, 30, $40. How do you do that? So there's, there's strategies behind it, but it's much more difficult when you're in a space like this. There's other spaces, very, very similar that have a more difficult time. Uh, Melanie, you are amazing. Uh, I can tell uh, just from this 10 minutes. It's 43 uh, years of experience. Well, 33 years of experience. <laughs> Come on. Uh, we're trying. We're trying. Um, great job. I, I am a fan. Uh, I throw your info uh, at the bottom when uh, we close this bad boy out. Thank you. Adam. All right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what that was. I was, I don't know what that was. Go for it. Rodeo. Uh, let's, let's do it. Yeah, Mark, thanks for having me, Melanie. I, I really, it was great to hear your story. Just as a bit of context on me before I talk about Rodeo, I started two CPG businesses myself and all the things that you're talking about just like hit so near and dear to my heart. Uh, you know, harping on how velocity is, is more important than more doors, uh, about how you're a tiny team. I was always a solo founder, like all that stuff. I, I, I feel the pain uh, and then also like feel the wins when they go well. You know, the fact that you're opening up Target, a thousand new doors is amazing. Um, and, and actually, I guess that's a good segue into what, what Rodeo does. So team of, of a ton of industry vets, a lot of former founders who realized that there was a pretty big need for solutions for, for growing brands like yours, Melanie. So we, we help across three main areas, specifically R&D, sales and operations, and have a, a whole bunch of different offerings in, in those realms to, to kind of help small brands get to the next level. Um, we work with some pre-launch brands, but predominantly, you know, brands who are already in distribution, who are doing hundreds of thousands to tens of millions of dollars in sales, but all emerging, all, you know, purpose-driven brands like yours, who are women-owned, who are doing good things and trying to kind of disrupt uh, industry standards that have been out there for a long time. So, so that's, that's what Rodeo does. I like that. Um, and I know what Rodeo does. I've checked them out before. Uh, Adam's info, Melanie's info. I never, I never point to the right place. So just this, uh, great having you both on the show. Be well, have a successful, happy, healthy week. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Adam.